Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and tonight we're going to talk about a uh, new project that we're heading down. It's a project that we're just going to do design only, but it's also a really good way to use all of that math that we just recently learned. So, tell you where this came from. Uh, a long time ago, I did a several posts on my blog here about a uh, PVC hammock raft. It was a hammock that was supported by PVC pipe. The, pa the PVC pipe formed pontoons. And uh, I've actually ended up with quite a few questions on that. A guy that had a uh, pump and was going to have to pump out a pond at a uh, golf course wanted to know how much PVC it would take to support that and I gave him my best guess another guy that was building a uh, little platform in a pond that he has at his property where he has some parties he wanted to uh, know how much PVC it would take to support his pontoon raft his little raft out there and since that time uh, number one PVC is it starts getting big enough to really support anything starts getting kind of expensive so since that time I started looking uh, because I'm doing this hydroponic stuff looking for a source for barrels and uh, buckets and all of that sort of stuff and I found one right here with this guy named Jay's barrel and drum uh, IBC totes he sells all these kind of containers which is really nice because he has the slideshow on his website that shows uses for some of these containers. And uh, as we go down here, and you see that there's some really nice ones here, he sells these wood, wooden whiskey barrels also. Some of these things look really, really nice. But then there's also us good old boys kind of stuff. And uh, his names are not exactly following up, but here's a meat smoker made out of 255 gallon metal drums. And this really nice little train there for, for kids. And water barrels, which I have done. But we cursor on down here. And let's go way on down. And bigger than heck, there is a floating raft using plastic barrels so somebody's done it and uh, even complete with the huck fin hat you know the whole deal there and it looks like a heck of a fishing pole stuck on the side of that thing so it can be done and people have done it so we're going to do a little bit of thinking about that there's another one here that one if you go back let's go back to it if I quick clicking quite so fast. That one's got 10 barrels to support net. Five on each side. But here's one that they're in the process of building. They've only got four barrels on it. So the question is, how much lift can I expect out of barrels? And uh, as you start building stuff on top of it and then loading it down with party goers in the case of the one or a pump or whatever, uh, how much can we expect it to support? So that is the question. Okay, so to answer that question, since we depend on numbers, uh, I went and looked up a plastic drum, a new one, to get an idea of what the uh, height and the weight and the diameter is of that drum because we're going to need to know all those answers. And here Uline sells them. And they sell them for brand new for $69 each. Of course, shipping's going to eat you up probably on that. But uh, you can find them around if you go to Craigslist for anywhere from $15 to $20 each. Uh, they're used ones that have been used for some purpose or other. And we're not really interested in a food grade one right now. But if you are intending on doing something like some of those pictures had, where you have uh, using it for a feeder or something, 
you probably ought to find out what has been stored inside this drum before you, you got it and used it. Anyhow, so we find out here that the height of this drum is 34 and a quarter inches, the diameter of it is 23 and a quarter inches, and the drum weighs 22 pounds. So we now know all of our answers that we need to know about that drum. And one thing that I'm going to point out, when we start doing calculations, I'm making an assumption that this thing is a perfect cylinder. So the bottom would not be curved like it is right now. And the top has no indentations. And we're making a, the assumption that it is exactly 23 and a quarter inches in diameter all the way. And every bit of it is going to be 34 and a quarter inches across the top and the bottom. Well, if you look at this picture, that assumption is probably a little bit optimistic. So in other words, when we calculate how much this thing can, we can load it up, we don't want to load it up quite that much. Uh, we would expect it to uh, not be quite as big as what we're calculating. But those are good numbers to start with. Okay, one other number we're going to need to know is... If you noticed everything that was in this one here, everything was given in inches and pounds. So it's good old American imperial imperial uh, measurement system. So we're going to need to know the pounds of uh, the pounds that water takes per cubic inch. And again, I went to the website and found weight of water. And uh, found out a conversion table, and one inch, one cubic inch of water weighs 0 0.03613 pounds of uh, pounds. So that that conversion factor is going to be real important to us as we go along. So now that we've done all that, let's talk about what we're going to do when we calculate this thing. Let's see if I can find my LibreCAD on here. It looks like I've closed it like a dummy, so I will have to get it another way. Okay, what we have right here is a circle. That circle is 23 and a quarter inches in diameter. And uh, that is the cross-section area of our drum. Now, let's think about what would happen if we had to... Uh, if we were having water, we were immersing that in water, and of course we'd lay it lengthwise. As we immerse it in water, uh, the water level at zero here, at the very bottom, it would have no lift, of course, because it's not immersed. But as it starts getting immersed, the diameter starts, or the area that's getting covered, that's going to be uh, displacing the water, is gradually getting bigger and bigger and so we've got a little bit of a problem on our hands trying to figure that out. We're not going to deal with that tonight but as you can see we would have a, a pretty good little problem to figure out. Once we get up to halfway and then we start immersing it a little bit more it's actually the the displacement decreases per inch of, of immersion or per unit of immersion. So again, we have that same problem. Now, if it's completely immersed, we can easily figure out what the what the uh, volume is that's going to be displaced with the complete circle. And half of that we can also easily figure out because it's exactly a half. So we're going to do the two easy calculations tonight. And then the next video will start dealing with the more complicated calculations. And at that point, we'll be using all that trigonometry that we just talked about. So there was a reason for dragging you through all that muck. Okay, how are we going to calculate it? We're going to use a spreadsheet. So I've got a lot of it already set up. We know the diameter is 23 and a quarter inches. The length is 34 and a quarter inches. And 
from the diameter we could take that and divide the diameter by 2 and that will give us the radius which is going to be real important for us and then we know the weight is 22 pounds and the water weight is 0 0.03613 pounds per cubic inch notice that whenever I set up a spreadsheet like this I always like to go ahead and put the uh, units of measure all the way through because that makes a big help on trying to uh, remember what units I'm working with because unfortunately sometimes you have to convert from metric to English back to English to uh, you know all kinds of conversions okay now that we've got those so we need to figure we're going to do it for maximum displacement completely immersed so we need to calculate that area the area of the cross section is a circle and as we all know the area of a circle is pi r squared so we'll do this equals pi I gotta spell it right times r times r pi r squared okay the volume for it is basically the area times the length that will calculate the volume so we can just do that by taking this area that we've already calculated and multiplying it by the length and I'm going to do something a little different here I'm going to use dollar signs in front of that that location of that cell a cell and a spreadsheet is one of these little squares and by using those dollar signs that means that when I copy this it won't change that uh, that will the place where it points to stays the same okay now we got to calculate the water weight that we are displacing so we take this volume and we multiply that times our magic number up here our conversion factor again I want to dollar sign those so that it stays it always points to the same thing and so we're going to displace about 500 and some odd pounds of uh, water and I'm getting a little different answer than I had before but that's probably okay and so if we displace that amount of water now what it can lift because the barrel itself has some weight so we have to subtract the barrel weight so we'll get that and that's equal to this right up here again I'm going to dollar sign it so I'm always pointing to the same number and we get the lift per barrel will be this weight the displacement of water minus the weight of the barrel and then if we had four barrels because we have one at each corner of our raft <coughs> excuse me if we have four barrels it's going to be equal to four times that And so we can hold up about 2,000 some odd pounds. Again, remember all the assumptions I said. So, wow, this thing has some lift on it. Okay, now let's go ahead and do it for only a halfway immersed. We would expect it to give us a number that would be about a half, but we do have that weight to mess with. So our area would be half the area that it was before. And now we can use the same formulas, which is why I use that dollar sign. We can copy all these things. And uh, once we figure it out, we can get lift up about 962 pounds with four barrels, each of them half immersed. Which is pretty impressive. So this thing, can uh, we can get some lift out of it. 
Now, if we were trying to use it as a raft, we'd probably like for it to not be even half immersed because we'd like to have it float as close on the top of the water as we can. So we might end up wanting to go with 10 barrels like the guy did in the uh, picture that we looked at earlier. It all depends on what we're trying to build. And again, remember that we are probably using optimistic numbers here right now. But we are getting some numbers. Okay, next time we'll deal with it as we're starting to immerse it up to one half inch, one half of the diameter of the uh, thing, right up to the center line of the cross section of the barrel. That's going to require us to use a little bit of uh, trigonometry and a little bit of thinking. So it's going to be a fairly long video, but I think you will enjoy it. Anyhow, hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, I will try to make this spreadsheet available for your upload. It'll be, you'll have to go to my website, and then from there you'll be able to upload this spreadsheet if you want to see how I did the magic numbers here. And uh, I'll also provide the links of those three websites that I used. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. This is Gary Fox of Great Week.